how to transfer crypto assets between Coinbase and Binance. So get both of your accounts open right here, both Coinbase and Binance. And then what we want to do is initiate a transfer. So from your Coinbase account, we're going to press send and receive up in the top right. And then from here, we just simply choose one of the assets that we have, how much we want to send, and then go ahead and send it. So I've got Bitcoin here. I'll also show you with a different asset because there are many different chains that we can potentially use. So we just have to know which one to use and make sure that nothing is going to go wrong. So initially, I'll show you with Bitcoin. We can press an amount to send and then we're sending this amount of Bitcoin right here. And we need to tap to select a recipient, which is going to be our Binance account. So click this. And it says you have some recents or previous history that you, you know, that might be your Binance account. If it isn't, just have to paste the address that you want to send it to right here. Now, remember, we're sending Bitcoin. And so over Bitcoin, we need to use the Bitcoin network. That's the only one that Coinbase lets us use. So let's go over to our Binance account. Then we're going to press deposit. Either one of these is fine. So we'll just press deposit here. And then we want to deposit crypto. So we'll click that and then we go through to the deposit page. So from here, we need to select the coin that we want to receive. Now we're sending Bitcoin, so just select that coin, BTC, and it says select network. If you can see, Binance actually supports way more networks than Coinbase. So you can send Bitcoin or the value of Bitcoin over these networks, for example, Lightning Network, but because we're using Coinbase, they're going to use the Bitcoin network. If you don't get an option, and it just says send, that will be the, you know, the main layer one network that you're using. So Bitcoin uses the Bitcoin network. So we're going to click that one. Now we have a deposit address, as you can see here. So I'm going to copy that. And then we're going to go back to our Coinbase account and we're going to paste that in. And you can see this green tick. This essentially says that Coinbase has scanned this wallet address and it is a Bitcoin wallet. So you, it's available to send and there are no errors in it, right? So this is a real wallet on a blockchain and it scanned that and knows it. So you can add this as a contact if you want, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to click this one, which is here. So we're going to click that. And then we go through to just confirming this. So this is the amount of Bitcoin we're going to send. We're going to send it to this address. You can preview send right here. So we'll click that. And as you can see, the network is Bitcoin. So you can confirm that before sending to make sure you're using both. And you can see the network fee here is $3.45. Now, when you send across blockchains, you're going to have to pay a blockchain fee. The blockchain charges for that. That's not what the centralized exchange is charging you. Some exchanges may charge you more than what the blockchain is charging as like a small fee on top. Uh, and we can't control that, but this is actually very, very competitive. So no issues there. It's going to take around 30 minutes because it's on Bitcoin a little bit slower. And this is the total. Now, remember, this is what we pay for the blockchain fee. So the amount we're sending is going to be this minus the fee. That's what's going to get received on the other end on Binance. Press send now and that's going to send over to Binance. But remember, on Bitcoin, it's going to take around 30 minutes. If you're looking to send a stable coin, which many people do, these are actually built on many different blockchains. So how should we go about this? So as an example here, I'm going to press send. And then instead of sending Bitcoin, I'm going to send Ethereum. Now, just substitute Ethereum for a stable coin or anything else. It's going to be the same thing right here. Stable coins can be built on Ethereum. They can be built on Polygon, Solana, uh, many other chains, right? So which one should you use? Well, we're going to send an amount. Now, because Ethereum is built on Ethereum, it's actually the same as sending USDT or USDC or another coin built on Ethereum. It's all going to use the same rails. So you can use this as an example. So let's say we're sending an amount of Ethereum or amount of a stable coin. We're going to send this amount and then we have to select the recipient. So let's click recipient. And again, we need to paste in an address that we want to receive it to. So we're going to go over to our Binance account and this time we're going to choose a stable coin or Ethereum, right? So we're going to choose Ethereum and we're going to click this one and then it says select network. Now, as you can see here, there are actually many different uh, blockchains that are supported, right? USDT can be built on all of these chains. So which one, which one should we use? Well, we can use the one that is cheapest. So if you're sending between crypto exchanges, these are both centralized exchanges. What you're doing really is just using a blockchain to send a message between the two exchanges that one exchange has your balance and they're sending that over 
to the other exchange who's going to receive that balance. Now, because you're on a centralized exchange, it doesn't matter which chain that you actually hold the asset on. The centralized exchange is just going to credit your balance with the amount of that asset that you've received. It doesn't matter which chain it's on. So we can actually use a cheaper chain. If you want to send Ethereum or a stable coin, instead of using ETH, which may be expensive, we can use a much cheaper chain. So what I'm going to do is to show you, just choose Ethereum. We have an Ethereum address right here. And then we're going to press copy and then go back and paste this in. And it says this is the address. So we're going to add that. And then from here, it says send Ethereum. Now we're going to preview send because you can see the network is Ethereum, right? So we're going to preview send. And the network fee is $1.33. Actually, really, really competitive. It's not too high. However, if we go back and then we can choose the network, we've now got a choice of all of these networks we can send on. Now, all of these networks are what's known as EVM style. That's Ethereum based. And so they actually are the same address. So you have the same address on all of these different networks. So we're going to choose um, as an example base, which is Coinbase's layer two. Just going to click I understand. Now we're sending over base and we're sending to this same address. So if we go back to Binance and we choose to receive Ethereum, but this time we're going to uh, send on base. Now, just to show you here, my address is you know 0x8 and we're going to actually go to base here and you can see the address is 0x8. This is the exact same address, but you are using a different network. They are all Ethereum style. This is a layer two on Ethereum, but it's the same address, a different network. So we're going to copy this in, then go back to Coinbase. Uh, now, we don't need to paste this in because it's the same address, but you can do that if you want just to be ultra sure that this is the same address that we're using and we're using the network base. If we preview send, we are now going to send that with a fee of eight cents. So that's the difference. The same address, it's a different network, which is a cheaper network. You're sending the value, that amount of ETH from one centralized exchange to another using a cheaper network. The same amount of ETH is gonna show up in your Binance account. You're just using a cheaper network. You have to make sure that both where you're sending from and receiving to support that network. So if we couldn't use um, one of the networks, right? So if Binance didn't support Arbitrum or Optimism or Polygon, we can't send from that network because Binance simply doesn't accept that network. So the main thing is, whichever you're using, you can use the cheapest one, but just make sure that you're sending from and receiving to both of those exchanges support that network. So if it's not an option, you can't use it, but if it is, you can. So that's how you can send other assets like ETH or stable coins or anything built on top of Ethereum from one exchange to another using the cheapest method. So you can go through these and see what the cheapest method is, but you've saved you know, $3 using a cheaper network just to send a message, message between the exchanges. My Crypto Investor course has 300 more videos like this. You can check it out via the link in the description below. I'm James, it's Money CG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.